Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again. And today we're doing a video behind a table because I've been wearing pajama pants for the last two weeks and I don't want to stop now. Today we're taking a look at the Epo Maker SK71. This is a 71 key keyboard with a really killer unique 71 key layout. I think you guys are gonna like it. Let's check it out. So the Epo Maker SK71, like the name implies, is a super small, ultra compact 71 key keyboard. And just looking at the layout, this is the first thing that really grabbed me and made me reach out to them and say, hey, I really wanna check this out. Because it's essentially a 60% sized keyboard with a full number pad on it. And for somebody that does like a lot of accounting type work or you're working in Excel, or even for me with video editing and doing things in Photoshop and stuff like that, I'm putting numbers and stuff in all the time. And I just like having a 10 key if I can have it. And so having that without sacrificing the actual size is really cool. I've actually got a Ducky 1-2 Mini here just to show you guys, and I'm sure I'll cut some B-roll in here, but it's only about a centimeter wider than a normal 60% Ducky 1-2 Mini. But what does that mean? Obviously there's gonna be some sacrifices here to make room for the 10 key. So I wanna take a minute and dive into the layout because as you can see, you know, squeezing all of these 71 keys into what is essentially a 60% sized keyboard, you could expect to see some compromises and some things being changed or omitted from the keyboard to make it all fit into this footprint. So the first thing we're gonna notice here on the left side of the board is that all of these modifiers, all these keys have been slimmed down considerably. So tab now taking up a single U of space, caps lock being slightly larger. You've got the shift key here, which is about two U. Uh, and then even these here are a little bit smaller. On the right side of the keyboard, we don't have the control or the alt key anymore. We've got just this single one U function key. And even moving up to the right shift key, which typically on a 65 percenter is a little bit smaller, um, but it's considerably smaller on this board. So, you know, those of you that have used the 65 percent keyboard before, when you go to hit the shift key, you know, a lot of times you hit, tend to hit the up arrow, which when you're typing can be really inconvenient because it jumps you up a line. So there's always some growing pains when getting used to that layout. And I think it's going to be even harder or a little bit more of a learning curve, I should say, on this keyboard. Now, when we come up here above the shift key, the enter key has also been slimmed down just a little bit. And you'll notice that where we have the quotation marks, the apostrophe, and colon and semicolon, well, traditionally, those are two keys that are next to each other. So what they've done here is they basically removed one key from this section here and combined it in a little bit. And if you look at the top row, you know, you can see that we've got this sort of linear thing going on instead of having, you know, the traditional kind of layout. That's because our plus and minus key and, and the dash and underscore have essentially been taken away and moved over to above the number pad. So your backspace key is actually going to be two keys moved over to the right. Now it does look proportionate here because the enter key is right underneath it. So everything there has just been condensed down it. And you could look at it as kind of being more ergonomically friendly because you're having to reach less when you're typing because you know you're not having to reach as far to hit those keys but I do think you're still going to have you know a bit of a learning curve because of how much all of this stuff has been condensed down. Overall build quality on the keyboard is actually quite good it's very weighty feels nice and solidly built and when you look at the plastic top covering here it's actually when you compare it to something like a ducky one two mini it feels a lot more sturdy a little bit less flex and i know the one two mini does have a history of being kind of flimsy on the top case but I wanted to point that out to something that's kind of more of the industry standard in terms of quality to show you guys why i was so impressed with just the overall feel of this thing Flipping over to the underside of the board, I was a little bit bummed to see that there's no extendable legs. This is kind of common with keyboards that are kind of a little bit more enthusiast style um, or they'll have like magnetic ones or something and less of the flip out. That said, the natural typing angle on this thing is actually pretty good, so you don't necessarily need to have it, but just wanna point that out there for those of you that like a steeper or flatter keyboard, you don't really have an option there unless you wanna prop something under it or something like that. In terms of connectivity to the computer, it does have a removable USB-C cable. And the cable itself is pretty nice little braided metallic cable with metal connectors, which is nice. So it's not like a flimsy plastic one. And with it being a removable USB-C cable, 
you will be able to obviously swap this out with something like space cables or any, you know, anything like that if you want to. And I think this board certainly is kind of cool enough in its aesthetic that it would be something that would go well with a custom cable. So looking at what comes in the box with this keyboard, you do get the braided USB-C cable, like I mentioned. You get three extra modifiers for if you wanna use this with a Mac or with Android, that sort of thing. You also get a just kind of basic flimsy keycap puller. That's fine. And then a switch puller because this is a hot swappable keyboard. And this is where for me, this keyboard goes from being the absolute perfect keyboard to just, just missing the mark just a little bit. So the keyboard comes with Gateron optical switches and you can get it in red, black, blue, and brown switches. So pretty much the general switch types there are available, but because it's an optical switch, it won't accept your normal mechanical cherry style two pin switches. So for somebody like me who prefers a little bit heavier tactile switch, this isn't something that I, you know, I was looking forward to popping some Halo Clears or something into this keyboard. And I personally, at this point, would have used it as a daily driver just because I love the layout so much. Now, I did get to thinking that optical switches are kind of becoming more popular these days. So maybe in the future, we will see a lot more options in that optical style of switch. So maybe that is the future. But for now, with the switch options and the type of switches I like to use, that does kind of paint me into a corner a little bit. For those of you that want something though that you can swap out and you like using optical switches like that, still a good option there because you can swap out and try different switches. Looking at the stabilizers on the keyboard, these are plate mounted cherry style stabilizers. They do come pre lubed from the factory, which is pretty cool. Although where they clip onto the plate, they are a little bit rattly still. So with this being hot swappable, I would still pop them off and mod them a little bit just so that they're a little bit more sturdy. That being said, there's only two actual sets of stabilizers on this keyboard because a lot of these keys have been made so small, they just don't need them. So you're only going to have stabilizers on the space bar and on the backspace key. And just so you guys can hear as a quick sound test, I got mine with Gateron red switches and let you guys hear how these sound. Moving on to the keycaps, the board does come with double shot PBT keycaps. These are in the GSA profile and they are not shine through, which is pretty obvious here as you can see, but they do have nice center oriented characters. And on quite a few of them, you will notice there's a lot of extra characters printed on them as well for making up those keys that we are sacrificing to make this layout. Like most 71 or 65 or 60% keyboards, you can get full size keyboard functionality with the use of the function keys. So it's nice to have those printed there. Because this is such a unique layout though, it is going to be really difficult, if not almost impossible to find an aftermarket keycap set for this keyboard. And if you do, you're definitely gonna be looking at something like a group buy or a really large keycap set because you're gonna to need to be getting all kinds of very unique sizes, which is going to be very expensive if you do find something that can accommodate this keyboard. Now, luckily, one thing that is nice about it is that I do like that it has these sort of three-toned colorway options with the white alphanumerics and kind of the gray, slight gray modifiers and then some red thrown in here and there. And the board is available in sort of this mostly white aesthetic and then they also have a darker gray with the same light gray and red accent keys thrown on there. So at least it's not just, you know, a stock all white keys or a stock all gray keys, but do keep that in mind. It's gonna be, I mean, I wouldn't even plan on being able to find aftermarket keycaps for this thing because they're gonna cost two to three times more than what the board does. Looking at the lighting on the keyboard, this is gonna be very similar to the GK68XS that I did. If you guys saw that one. It's got a healthy amount of preset lighting effects baked right into the keyboard because there is no companion software with this one. So you've got a bunch of different options for reactive effects as well as a bunch for just preset animations. And I like that on this board, the animations are all pretty unique. They're not just like a bland color wave or a color wheel. They've got some other stuff sprinkled in there too so that it's not just kind of the same stuff you see on every keyboard. They do have the full size keyboard functionality like I mentioned before and you can do kind of the standard basic macro recording and pretty much anything that you would see on something like a Ducky 1 2 Mini or any other smaller compact keyboard like this that doesn't make use of a companion software. Overall, the SK61 comes in at about 90 bucks. And I think when you consider everything you get for that price, it's definitely a pretty killer deal. 
When you compare it to something like the Ducky 1-2 Mini, which is gonna run you between 100 to 120 bucks, depending on switch type, and if you go with the Mecha or the SF. And if you look at something like the Razer Huntsman Mini, which is gonna be about 130 bucks, kind of in that whole realm, when you consider you get the hot swap, the PBT keycaps, the really cool, unique 71 key layout, all of that with the build quality of the keyboard, I think is very passable. Some cons with this keyboard is that the layout is definitely gonna take some getting used to. And I would even go as far as to say that some people will find it kind of a deal breaker depending on just how small some of these modifiers and kind of the, the slim down nature of the board is. I personally really like the layout and I think it's worth taking the time to get used to, but your mileage is definitely gonna vary on this one. Another kind of con is because of that, getting aftermarket keycaps is gonna be damn near impossible. Uh, and again, if you do that, it's gonna be very expensive. And so most people that would go that option, I think would probably just build their own, get the layout they want and the keycaps they want that way. Other than that though, I really don't have a whole lot to knock this keyboard on. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this 71 key layout. I think it's certainly a really cool, unique kind of layout that I haven't seen before and you know, just with that alone and with everything that we get, I can definitely recommend it to you if you're looking for something like this. Um, but anyways, guys, that's it for the video. You can give it a like if you enjoyed it to show your support. If you're new here on the channel, I'd love to see you subscribe. So I've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the near future. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Brainbean Gaming for all my giveaway announcements, as well as just kind of random BS that I like to post on there. Um, but as always, guys, stay safe out there, take care of each other, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.